Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to start up, taxi and take off the MiG-29 in DCS Flaming Class 3. We begin the mission with the plane in the parking area, all systems off and the canopy open. The first thing we are going to do is check weapons and fuel, not strictly part of the startup process, but it's still good practice. Open the rearming and refueling window. Here we can change the amount and balance of flare and chaff, the amount of gun ammo and the fuel load but most importantly, we can change the weapons loadout. Choose one of the predefined loads or right-click on a specific pylon and choose a weapon from a selection of air-to-air -air missiles, bombs, rockets and so on. Not all weapons can be installed in every pylon though. The more central the pylon, the bigger the selection available. Once you are happy with the setup, press OK and wait for the ground crew to complete the orders. The plane must be completely stopped, both engines off and at zero RPMs. Otherwise, the ground crew will tell you that they are unable to comply and do nothing. First, they perform the refueling. You can see the fuel level indicator changing during the operation. Then comes the rearming. You can watch it by going to external view. Wait till you get the completion message to proceed. Go back inside the cockpit now. Check the throttle. Make sure it's all the way back. If it's not, the plane will start moving as soon as the engines are operational. Next, switch on the electric power. Notice how the hat and the instruments panel come to life. If external light conditions are poor, you can light up the cockpit. You need electric power to use the radio. If you don't have electricity, it looks like you can still operate it, but it's not really working and you won't get any response from air traffic control. Open the communications menu and request ATC permission to start out the plane. In the list of our fields, the first one is the closest to you, so this is the one you want to talk to. Once permission is granted, we can go ahead and start the engines. We'll watch the following instruments closely during the process. The tachometer, which shows the turbine's RPMs as a percentage. So for example, the number 8 represents 80% 8 of the maximum RPMs the turbine can deliver. The tachometer has two needles, one for the left engine, marked with a number 1, and another for the right engine, marked with a number 2. The interstage turbine temperature indicators which show the temperature of the engines. There are two dials, one for each engine. I prefer to start the engines separately. First one engine, and when the RPM needle starts going up, the other one. The engines will take a moment to reach operational status. Notice the warning lights indicating the starting status of the engines. Notice also that when the RPMs go above 40%, the turbine temperature of that engine rises too. You can close the canopy now. It's time to contact ATC again and request permission to taxi to runway. In the response, we are given the runway number we must take. This number represents the direction of the runway in degrees from north, divided by 10. So for example, 8 means 80 degrees, 26 means 260 degrees, and so on. To find out what runway corresponds to the number given by ATC, go to Map View, click on Map Satellite View, and check the numbers at the head of the runway. This is our plane. This is runway 8. And this is runway 26. Therefore, we must go to the left to take runway 8. Turn on the navigation lights so others know that you are about to move. Also, if needed, turn the traffic lights on. 
It's time to go. Push the throttle up slowly until the plane starts moving, and then pull it back down a little so it doesn't go too fast. To check how much power you are applying, watch the tachometer. How far you have to push the throttle depends on how heavy the plane is. In this case, with a lot of heavy weapons hanging from the pylons and a tank full of gas, I'll go up to 80%, and when the plane starts rolling, back down to 75%. This number in the hat represents your speed in kilometers per hour. It is the indicated airspeed, so the reading might be misleading in the presence of a strong wind, but in general try to keep it below 50 while taxiing, using the wheel brakes if necessary. When you have to take a turn, try to stay under 30 kilometers per hour. This instrument on the left shows the indicated airspeed too, but it's mostly useful at higher speeds. Under the indicated airspeed, is the horizontal acceleration cue. When the triangle is on the right it means the plane is speeding up, when it's on the left it means the plane is slowing down. If the change in speed is not significant, the mark stays centered. This part shows where the plane is pointing to. The numbers represent the compass heading divided by 10, and the triangle marks the actual direction. Right now the plane is pointing to about 227 degrees. The same information can be seen in the compass on the right of the cockpit. This is the current altitude in meters. The small letter P means it is radar altitude. When the letter is not present, the number means barometric altitude. The radar altitude is also shown in this instrument. There is an additional barometric altimeter down on the left. The small needle represents altitude in thousands and the large one in hundreds of meters. The number at the bottom of the altimeter is the barometric pressure selected. Unfortunately, it is not operational in the MiG-29. This is the artificial horizon line, and the cross above is the aircraft datum. The aircraft datum shows the pitch and bank angle with respect to the horizon. The scale on the right shows the pitch angle of the plane in degrees. The tick marks represent the bank angle of the plane. These stand for 0, 15, 30, 45 and 60 degrees. All this information about the plane's pitch and bank angle can also be found in the ADI or attitude direction indicator. This instrument is the mechanical devices indicator. It shows the state of the flaps, landing gear and air brakes. Right now it shows that the landing gear is extended and secured. The flaps and air brakes are retracted. Next to it is the landing gear lever. When you are approaching the runway, pull the throttle to idle and stop the plane. Contact ATC again and request permission to take off. When cleared, push the throttle up until the plane starts moving. Take it to the middle of the runway and align it with the end. Throttle to idle and stop the plane completely using the wheel brakes. The monitor on the right of the cockpit is the head down display. At this moment it shows the same information as the head but we are going to change it to tactical view. By default, the key for this action is not assigned, so press the escape key, go to adjust controls, select the systems group and look for the action MFD hat, repeater mode on off. Double click on the empty space to the right and press the key combination you want to use. In my case, left control plus R. Finally, press OK to complete the assignment. Activate the en route navigation mode. This adds additional information to the hat, useful to follow the flight plan. I won't go over that information in this tutorial. Turn off repeater mode for the head down display to enter tactical view. 
Now the flight plan is displayed. If the plane is heavy with weapons and fuel or the runway is short, deploy the flaps to make the takeoff easier. Now you are ready for takeoff. Push the throttle up to 100% until the afterburner lights are on. Keep the plane center in the runway with the small rudder corrections. When the speed gets to 300 km per hour, pull the joystick back slowly until the pitch angle is about 10 degrees and keep it there. When you can confirm altitude gain, retract the landing gear. At 500 km per hour, the flaps will retract automatically. At 600 km per hour, you can reduce the throttle to 90%. When you get to the desired altitude, you can level the plane and turn off navigation lights. Congratulations, you are now airborne! You can find a short checklist along with a practice mission in the description below.